Sony A1, one year review, pros, cons. All right, time to start shooting. But wait, where is my A1? A7S3, FX3, A7 IV, where could it be? Is it in here? Where could it be? Is it in here? Babe, do you know where my A1 is? No, I have no idea. What about you, buddy? Do you know where my A1 is? No. Okay. <laughs> is it in here? Is it in there? No. Is it in here? There it is. Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you enjoyed that skit. That was a little bit of an exaggeration, but I was really just trying to prove a point, which is what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. I've had this camera for a little over a year now and I've done branding shoots, portraits, wildlife, street photography, even bird photography. It's great and all, but I have to let it go. But before I do, I figured I'd do a one year review and talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I love, some of the things that I don't like as much, and ultimately why I've decided to put it on the market. Now, before I go any further, I will say that this is not a technical review. There's a ton of other videos on the technical specs of the A1. Go and check out Gerald's video on that. This will simply be a video about my experience of just using the camera for a little over a year. Some of the things I do like about it, some of the things that I did didn't like as much and ultimately why I've decided to put it on the market. So let's dive right in. All right, so I basically got this camera as soon as it came out. I remember Billy and I were on our baby moon and I couldn't sleep for whatever reason. I was watching a ton of videos on the Sony A1 on it just being released and the marketing for it was amazing. And I just thought to myself, I need to have this camera. <laughs> and so with a little bit of persuasion, which really turned into begging, I convinced Billy to let us buy this camera by letting her imagine our son in 50 megapixels. Imagine our son in 8K video. <laughs> and so that sold it for her. Hands down, what I love most about the Sony A1 is the color science. Previous to owning the A1, I owned A7C and the A7S3. And I love those cameras as well, but I did notice that the A7S3 had a green tint when using that camera, specifically on my skin tones. And when I put a Phantom LUT on it, my skin just looked horrible. Of course, with some color grading and stuff, you can definitely make that look better. But when you put a conversion LUT on this, it just looks amazing right off the bat. Now, that's primarily with video. With photos, exactly the same thing. The photos that are coming off of this camera are really, really good and you can't go wrong. The color science on this one is just on a whole nother level and Sony has definitely improved the colors on the Sony A1. Second to that is the feel of the body. To be honest, I really do like how this camera feels on my hand. I just love the fact that this is their flagship camera and it's so compact. Now, some people might argue that it's not a professional body, whatever. The great thing is that you can attach a battery grip to this and you can make it a pro camera. And for me, I actually really enjoy shooting like this because who wants to be carrying a ton of gear and a ton of weight anyway, right? And so me personally, I've recently struggled with having some arthritis on my hands. And so the fact that I can carry around something that is very minimal and it's not gonna weigh a lot is actually a great benefit for me because my hands do start hurting after a while. And so I can rig this up and make it bigger. I do have a battery grip that I can attach to this if I do want to have more battery. But just the fact that you're getting so much power compared to a Canon R3 to a Nikon Z9 that are just really big bodies. You have the flagship right here, 30 frames per second, 50 megapixels, 8K video on such a tiny body. Sony has just done a marvelous job in fitting all those features into such a compact body. Next has to be the autofocus. When this thing locks on a subject, it just won't let go and it does an amazing job of focusing on whatever it is that you want. And I almost feel it's like cheating because frankly, when I went to go shoot bird photography, now I'm not an experienced bird photographer, 
right? I haven't been doing it for years. I actually went with some family members that have been doing it for a really long time. And I was getting some pretty good shots for me being a rookie. And they were actually really impressed as well. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm just pointing and shooting, man. Like I'm also framing and taking light into consideration as well. But frankly, the camera, it makes it so easy to go out there and shoot whatever it is that you want to shoot. And it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, which is just amazing next is the dynamic range now since i was doing bird photography you'll know that a lot of times these birds get into a situation where there is a lot of light or where there's no light at all and when i was able to bring those images back to post i was able to pull the highlights and push the shadows no problems at all and that was always something that i was really impressed with was the dynamic range on the camera when it came to the photos now same thing for the video the video has really great dynamic range and the best part is that if you do have a ninja of five you can actually get ProRes raw out of this camera and you're even going to get a ton more range as well since we just talked about video one of the things that i will say is that the 8k video of this camera is amazing frankly i prefer it over every other camera body the not just the colors but the image quality obviously you're just getting a lot more resolution compared to any other sony but it just looks really good even when shooting at 4k when you can get the color science the dynamic range and the quality off of this camera compared to any of the other ones, this hands down beats every single other Sony video camera. And frankly, yes, you don't really need to shoot an 8K video, 4K is fine, but the fact that you're investing on a camera like this that's gonna be future-proof for years to come is just really great. And I shot 8K video on this. If you have a Mac, M1 Pro chip, it handles the video just fine and you don't have any issues. Another thing that I loved about this was the viewfinder. When you look at your images in the viewfinder, it looks so nice and crisp and bright as well that it just makes looking at your photos a lot more enjoyable, you know? It's kind of hard to explain but the viewfinder on this just looks amazing. Next is the button layout. Now, one of the things that I love about the Sony body specifically is just the fact that you can reach a multitude of buttons using one hand. And I recently shot Canon there for a little bit. I thought the grass was greener on the other side. Let me tell you, it's not. <laughs> I'll give you a quick example. It's the on and off switch right there. And for me, when you're out there running gunning, it's so great where you can just grab your camera with one hand, turn it on, shoot whatever it is that you wanna shoot, turn it back off and you're done. For example, I went out hiking with one of my friends and I have a hiking stick on my hand and a camera on the other one. I don't want to stop because I'm using my hiking stick for support. And with the Canon bodies, you have to use your other hand to turn off and on the camera, which frankly is a little annoying. And these are the small things that many people take for granted. Sony has done an amazing job of just user experience. I, by far, it is one of the easiest cameras to use and the most convenient, really. And so if you're out there running gunning, you wanna shoot some quick shots, shoot some quick video off and on, you turn it on, this camera is lightning fast on top of that. It turns on in a split second. And so it's pretty awesome. I do like the fact that I can record, I can shoot, I can turn the camera on and off and it's great. All right, my last one on the pros list is the megapixels. When you're out there doing some bird photography or you could really do this for anything, the ability to crop in and still maintain a high quality image, specifically when you're out there doing bird photography, it's amazing. Now, this actually takes us to my cons list because as much as I love the 50 megapixels and it's super convenient when it comes to cropping, it's not that convenient when it comes to the file size and all the space that it takes on your hard drive. Now, again, one of the things that I didn't really talk about was the 30 frames per second on my pros list. Yes, it's great, 30 frames per second is awesome. Just look, listen. Now, with great power comes great responsibility. And I will say that just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? And so I frankly started just shooting 30 frames per second when I was out there doing bird photography. And you know, I'm a rookie, so if you're a pro, you only shoot once and you just get the shot that you want. And afterwards, you end up having 1,500 photos that you don't know what to do with. So having 1,500 photos, 50 megapixels each takes up a ton of hard drive space. You end up deleting most of them anyway 
anyway, but it's just a lot to deal with. And so that's just one of the things to, not really a con, but just one of the things to keep an eye out for when you do use a camera like this. Another item on the cons list is just the noise on the image. Now I will say the noise on the video is actually phenomenal. I would say that it's comparable to the a7S III and the FX3, but when it came to the photos, I did notice that there was a lot of noise and grain in the images. And that's just something that I didn't expect. And that's definitely something you should know. I ended up doing a lot of research on this and I found out that you're gonna have a lot more noise and grain simply because of the fact that there's just a lot more megapixels in the camera. And so it's just something that you have to take into consideration. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but I was a little turned off of the fact that you're paying so much for an amazing camera and you're just gonna have a lot more noise in those photos that frankly, I didn't wanna deal with, but it's fine once you get the image into posts and now with all of these amazing post processing softwares available you can get rid of the majority of noise when it comes to these images and they still look very nice very sharp and you're not going to be disappointed but that was just something that i didn't know to begin with and it was something that turned me off in the very beginning once i understood why it happened then I was okay with it. I will link a video below talking more about why there's a lot more noise when it comes to cameras that just have more megapixels if you wanna learn more about that. Now, one of the other things that I did notice about the camera is that when I was out there doing bird photography and I did have the eye priority for birds on enabled, all of a sudden it would just stop working. I was trying to get the bird in frame and all of a sudden I noticed that it wasn't locking on to the eye. And when I would come in to enable the feature, I would get this weird error message and I didn't really know what it was it's kind of hard to replicate so I can't specifically show you all I had to do was turn off the camera and then turn it back on and it was fine but it was just something that I noticed and I mean it's kind of annoying that you're paying so much for a camera and stability when it comes to these cameras is just the most important thing and that was just something that we had to deal with but I'm sure it's something that they'll fix with some kind of firmware update when it comes to the stability of the camera so that's just something to keep in mind as well so my biggest gripe with with this camera is just the fact that it doesn't have a flip out screen. And that was a really big disappointment for me because frankly, I would use this camera a lot more. It would be my main camera if it had a flip out screen because not only do I shoot photos, but I do a lot of video as well. And when you're shooting video, specifically if you're by yourself and you're shooting yourself as I'm doing now, the flip out screen is essential. And I know some people would say, hey man, it's a professional camera. Professionals are behind the camera, not in front of it or I don't know whatever it is that you want to say right if it's the all for one and one for all it would have been that for me if it just had the flip out screen and frankly that's the main reason why I don't use it more often and why I've decided to let it go I just don't use it this is too much of a camera for me I feel that someone else could get better use for it and also since I bought the a7 IV I feel that the a7 IV is a mini a1 the color science on the a7 IV is just amazing you're getting that old oversampled 7K into that 4K video and it's just been great. The autofocus has been really nice as well. So you're comparing a $2,500 camera with a, I ended up paying seven grand with taxes on this. And frankly, I just don't use it enough. It's just been sitting on my shelf and every now and then when I go do bird photography, I will take it. But the a7 IV is simply enough to shoot pretty much anything, considering that I'm not going out every day to do that kind of photography. And primarily, if I'm shooting video, I have other equipment, right? I got the FX3, which I'm shooting with right now. I got the A7 IV, the A7S III, and that's all I need. To be honest, I am a little sad that I'm letting it go just because I do really like this camera. And like I said, I would use it more often if it had the flip out screen, but it doesn't. So maybe Mark II? I don't know, we'll see, right? <laughs> But thanks so much for listening, guys. That pretty much wraps it up. If you enjoyed watching this video, I'd appreciate if you give me a, a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel. My goal is to do a lot more content around gear, just filmmaking and photography, and also the business side of having a creative business. I myself have been in the agency world for over a decade now. And with my team and I, we were able to build a seven figure business. And so I'm also gonna be talking about some of the aspects of running a successful creative business. So if you want to learn more about that, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.